This 1968 Beatles classic, dismissed by Lennon and McCartney, finally reveals Harrison's isolation within the Beatles. George Harrison is often described as the quiet Beatle. His role in the Beatles is now considered imperative to their long success, and he is many fans' favorite Beatle, but that wasn't the case in the early days, at least not in George's mind. He was unsure of the significance of his role and his contributions outside of playing the guitar on Beatles songs were minimal. One might say George was overlooked when considering the magnitude of John and Paul's songwriting credits. Put yourself in George's shoes. You have two of the greatest songwriters writing hit after hit with immense pressure to continue the success while having your own growing list of songs. In the back of your mind, you're thinking, I want to bring my songs to the table, but are they good enough? John and Paul are like George's older brothers since school days. He has always looked up to them, but he has something stirring within himself that he cannot deny. George's uncertainty in himself in this situation is understandable and relatable. So what happened when Harrison started to bring his songs and what was the reaction by Lennon and McCartney? There is a song that he will write that encapsulates his feelings of isolation within the Beatles and their disharmony as he wades through the process for years. The song is initially dismissed, but goes on to be one of their most iconic songs. Honestly, George could have easily just ridden the wave of success as the Beatles guitarist and sat back without sticking his neck out for more input. But he didn't. He wanted to contribute more. Let's look at George's struggle to get his songs recognized alongside music's greatest songwriting team and the incredible song that came to the surface expressing this agonizing situation as we try to understand what was behind his drive for more creative input. Life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. Soren Kierkegaard When John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr started their professional journey with the Beatles, they each had their designated roles. John and Paul were songwriters in addition to their instruments and singing, George was the lead guitarist, and Ringo was the drummer maintaining the Mersey backbeat. It was pretty straightforward and everyone was comfortable with that arrangement. People say, I'm the Beatle who changed the most, but to me, that's what life's about. George Harrison. Harrison got his first song included on a Beatles record, Don't Bother Me, which appeared on With the Beatles, their second album released in 1963. A Hard Day's Night released in 64 did not include any of George's songs. Harrison was quietly amassing a library of his own songs and would routinely bring them to the band to see if he could get any on the albums. Oftentimes, the songs were brushed aside. He finally got two songs included on Help in 1965, including I Need You and You Like Me Too Much. It's come on back to me, though you've gone away this morning, you be... He wasn't up to par with Lennon and McCartney yet at this point. George had this to say about the ongoing push to write songs. They had a lot of practice, put it that way. They had been writing since we were in school. So they had written most of their bad songs before we had gotten into the recording studio, Harrison had humbly observed. For me, I had to come from nowhere and start writing and to have something at least quality enough to be able to, you know, put it in the record with all the wondrous hits. John Lennon elaborates on that sentiment in an interview later on. George didn't even used to sing when we brought him into the group. He was a guitarist. He wasn't in the same league for a long time. That's not putting him down. He just hadn't had the practice at writing that we had. John Lennon. To make it even further laborious is the fact George was writing on his own with no one to bounce ideas off of or provide feedback or input on a lyric here or there like Paul and John had. The Lennon-McCartney writing teamwork was like a masterclass on collaboration. George's songwriting was painful for him because he had no one to collaborate with, and John and Paul was such a collaborative duo that they would throw out a word of advice to him and so on, but they didn't really work with him, George Martin. 
Harrison continues to toil away and he is usually given two songs on each album, all the while he is writing songs that continuously get dismissed. Anxiety is the dizziness of freedom, Soren Kierkegaard. Like mentioned earlier, George could have just kept strumming away at the guitar and reaping the benefits of the tremendous success the Beatles were having. But the money and fame was not fulfilling him. He wanted more. Why? George may have been experiencing an existential crisis of meaning, which is what led him from being initially satisfied as the Beatles guitarist to wanting to have more of a voice within the band and why he kept working to get his songs included. His perseverance under such an international microscope is highly inspirational. His songs are included on albums, and you can see the quality of his work improving with each new record, including Think For Yourself, one of the Beatles' first accusatory songs, which was in step with the protest songs of the time. And If I Needed Someone, a love song about Patty Boyd, who he would marry several months later, are his contributions on Rubber Soul in 1965. George's sitar contribution to Norwegian Wood completely transforms the song, adding a richness to the song and the entire album. George's musical depth is undeniably flowering on Rubber Soul. The album stands out by exploring new concepts and sounds. Harrison said that Rubber Soul was his favorite Beatles album. We certainly knew we were making a good album. We did spend more time on it and tried new things. But the most important thing about it was that we were suddenly hearing sounds that we weren't able to hear before. Then on Revolver in 1966, Harrison had three songs included on the album, including Taxman, Love You Too, and I Want to Tell You, which Harrison said he wrote about the avalanche of thoughts that he found hard to express in words. Two, three, four, one, two. Taxman! Sgt. Pepper in 1967, considered by many to be a Beatles masterpiece, was highly regarded for the innovative songwriting. Only one of George Harrison's songs is included. The song is a deeply spiritual song that is reflecting a profound change in George, within you, without you. Keith Womack calls it, quite arguably, the album's ethical soul and views the line, with our love, we could save the world as a concise reflection of the Beatles' idealism that soon inspired the summer of love. Harrison spoke of the laughter at the end of the song. It's a release after five minutes of sad music. You were supposed to hear the audience anyway as they listened to the Sgt. Pepper's show. That was the style of the album. Then on the Magical Mystery Tour album, George has one song, Blue Jay Way, he wrote while waiting for friends during his stay in the Hollywood Hills on a foggy L.A. night. A while George doesn't have as many songs included on albums, his contributions are completely transformative to every album. He is bringing concepts and ideas with unique sounds and instruments that many in the Western world had never heard before. The inspiration floods music and culture in the 60s and even decades to come. Some of the songs that are rejected from Beatles albums during this time are All Things Must Pass, Isn't It a Pity, Let It Down, and Hear Me Lord. These songs showed up on his later solo albums, it was while writing and recording the White Album that resentments come to surface after the band returns from India. Then Ringo also leaves for a brief period. Harrison led the band in welcoming back Ringo by installing a large flower display all over Starr's drum kit. Patty Boyd recalled Harrison would come home after a recording session and be utterly furious. 
She said, The Beatles made him unhappy with the constant arguments. They were vicious to each other. That was really upsetting and even more so for him because he had this new spiritual avenue. Like a little brother, he was pushed into the background. He would come home from recording and be full of anger. It was a very bad state that he was in. George is feeling a tremendous amount of frustration at having his songs dismissed. He begins to write a song in which he initially gets the lyrics from the Book I Ching, or the Book of Changes. When he opens it up and sees the words, gently weeps, and that becomes the foundation for the song. The book seemed to me to be based on the Eastern concept that everything is relative to everything else, as opposed to the Western view that things are merely coincidental. George Harrison The song is a commentary on what George sees happening in the world around him, but it is more a commentary on his own feelings about his role relative to the Beatles and the tensions within the band overall. The song goes through several transformations. A demo that Harrison recorded at his home in Escher includes an unused verse. I look at the trouble and hate that is raging, while my guitar gently weeps as I'm sitting here, doing nothing but aging. The problems you sow are the troubles you're reaping. Both lines are eventually discarded. Another version is, I look from the wings at the play you are staging, while my guitar gently weeps as I'm sitting here, doing nothing but aging. This version was released on the 1996 Anthology 3. I look from the wings at the play. The Beatles recorded while my guitar gently weeps several times during the White Album sessions, which began in late May 1968. The recordings were characterized by a lack of cooperation among the other band members. Also during these sessions, the band regarded the overly intrusive presence of John Lennon's new romantic partner, Yoko Ono, as a distraction creating more tension. When he takes the song to the Beatles, initially they don't show much enthusiasm for the song and have an indifferent effort to record it. After several recordings, he gets an idea to bring his friend Eric Clapton to the recording studio to play on the song, knowing that they would be on their best behavior and not reject him with Clapton there. On a ride from Surrey into London, Harrison asked Clapton to play guitar on the track. Clapton was initially reluctant to participate, he later recalled that his initial response was, I can't do that. Nobody ever plays on Beatles records. Harrison eventually convinces Clapton. His guitar part is played on Harrison's Gibson Le Paul electric guitar, Lucy, a recent gift from Clapton, was overdubbed that evening. Recalling the session in his 2007 autobiography, Clapton says that while Lennon and McCartney were fairly non-committal, he thought the track sounded fantastic, adding, I knew George was happy because he listened to it over and over in the control room. Harrison recalled that Clapton's presence also ensured that his bandmates tried a bit harder and were all on their best behavior. The Beatles carried out the remaining overdubs, which included an ascending piano motif played by McCartney over the introduction. The Beatles and Eric Clapton record George Harrison's song, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. It is clear that George is a formidable songwriter. The song stands out on the album in the recordings with its haunting opening and deeply introspective lyrics. Many now see George Harrison's songs at par with Lennon and McCartney's. Eric Clapton said that, while my guitar gently weeps, conveyed Harrison's spiritual isolation within the group. Harrison has a total of four songs on 68's The White Album. Have you seen the little biggies crawling in the dirt?
George Harrison will go on to write seven more songs that are included on Beatles albums, including It's Only a Northern Song, and It's All Too Much on Yellow Submarine. Then by Abbey Road, Harrison's Something and Here Comes the Sun are considered by many to be the album's best songs, making it the favorite album by many Beatles fans. Do you want to hear the song I wrote yes. last night? Okay. It's just a very short one. It's called I Me Mine. I Me Mine, Dig It and For You Blue are included on Let It Be. There are heated discussions caught on camera while filming at Twickenham and George leaves the band at one point. George is tired of being criticized and not having his songs taken seriously. I'll play, you know, whatever you want me to play. Or I won't play at all if you don't want me to play. No, whatever it is that will please you, I'll do it. You know, like people do when they're together, they start picking on each other. You know, it was like, it's because of you you'd got the tambourine wrong that my whole life is a misery. You know, it became petty, but the manifestations were on each other because we were the only ones we had. By the time the Beatles break up in 1970, George Harrison has enough songs in his own collection to record years of solo albums. So while George may have felt overlooked by Lennon and McCartney as he brought his songs forward, he was ultimately pushed to improve his songwriting in order to get to their level. It was his persistence and his ability to continuously improve in each song that he developed his songwriting ability. Motives are causes experienced from within, Schopenhauer. So what do you think of George's journey to becoming a songwriter within the Beatles? What is your favorite Harrison song? Please share in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Your support means the world.